Hello makers! So, well over a year ago, Prusa sent me this SL1 to play with. I did a live stream on the, of that unboxing and I also did some test prints and I also used it a lot on projects since then. However, I never did a review of it. As time went by, I uh, used it less and less, mainly because I had access to a lot of other monochrome LCD resin printers, which were just frankly quicker. Yes, the whole experience with an SL1 is a lot less laborious. Essentially though, it was just slower than the rest. Now fast forward to a couple of months ago when Prusa announced the SL1S Speed, which is their second generation of SL1. It promised to be ridiculously quick at printing resin and that quickly got my attention. Now Prusa did offer to send me the SL1S, however, I decided to purchase the upgrade kit myself, which I did install and test during the live stream on my secondary channel, which you can just watch right here. Today I am here to give you my thoughts and uh, talk about my experience with it so far and why this is the machine for you if you are in the additive manufacturing business. But maybe not so much if you're just a hobbyist. Before I begin though, a disclaimer. As I mentioned, Prusa had sent me the SL1 and the CW1 in the past free of charge. I was not asked to do a review and nor was one expected of me. No money has exchanged hand for this video and all thoughts expressed in this video are solely based on my experience with the machines that I have right here on the table. Now before I start talking about specs, if your first thought right now is to jump in the comment section and just type 2000 euros I could buy 5 Mars 3s, then more than likely this machine is not aimed at you. Yes, most of my viewers are makers who tinker, some might have the disposable income to splash on something as fancy as the SL1S. But after having experienced the true advantage of this machine, Prusa have targeted a very specific market segment and I might have the analogy to explain this. So just hang in there. First, let's get back to the specs. The machine itself is built like a tank, truly. There's just nothing to fault in terms of build quality and the materials used. The attention to detail in the machine is just visible from every single angle. The one thing that will stand out to a new SL1S user upon first switching it on is the ridiculously detailed and easy to follow wizard for setting up the machine. With its full color LCD touchscreen showing every single stage in text and also photo format to just make life easier. And that's going to be a recurring theme with the SL1S. Everything is just easier and more efficient. It has a build volume of 127 by 80 by 150 millimeters. Moving the build platform is a 24 millimeter ball screw guide rail. It has a 5.96 inch monochrome display with 2560 by 1620 pixels and helping it achieve the insane printing speeds is the tilting VAC mechanism. Granted that the insane print times difference is mainly attributed to the fact that the screen went from a standard color LCD to a monochrome one, which on its own cuts the printed time by about two and a half times. But the SL1S goes a step further with how the layer change works. It also has a USB, Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity for file transfer and also automatic firmware updates. It has a resin sensor and a plethora of other features. The vat on the SL1S has been swapped for a plastic injection molded one as opposed to the aluminium one, yes, once again, aluminium, that was on the SL1, mainly to be able to increase the speed of the tilting mechanism. This in turn made replacement vats cheaper, half the price actually, and therefore I could buy a couple more in order to just swap out the vats with different resins inside to save time cleaning each vat. The vats also come in with a handy cover to safeguard the resin inside. Now as you can see, I have a lot of prints here, mainly to show the differences in speed achieved before and after the upgrade, ranging from full print volumes to tiny detailed ones. But I have to be honest, the speed of the SL1S is just plain ridiculous. Having done thousands of hours in resin 3D printing throughout the years, a full build volume print, which is this right here at 50 microns, went from almost 12 hours to just under four hours. And that is very fast for any monochrome resin printer doing a 15 centimeter tall print. This is achieved thanks to the tilting VAT mechanism. The way most standard MSLA resin printers work is that they have to first raise gently the bed in order to release the cured layer from the FAP film. 
the forces here are insane as the full layer has to be lifted simultaneously. Think of the process like trying to pull a plunger straight up. After that, the platform has to be raised another eight to 10 millimeters to allow resin to seat back in under the print, followed by the build plate once again being lowered into the resin in order to start the curing of the next layer. With the SL1S, once the layer is cured, the vat is tilted. So rather than a pulling force being applied evenly throughout the FEP film, you have more of a peel effect, which in turn reduces the forces and stress on the build plate, allowing for a more controlled peel and a much more accurate print. As the vat tilts down, the resin recovers the entire vat thanks to gravity, the build plate moves up a layer's height worth of distance, and the vat then simply comes back up into its original position, and the next layer starts curing immediately. Now this happens within a couple of seconds, and that's what makes it so fast. In fact, I did the resin lapse of a print, and my old Canon could, well, it barely had time to reset after every photo it was taking. Now this also gives you an added benefit. Some resins, like the Soriatek Fast Navy Grey resin, is very pigment heavy in order to give it that matte finish. With standard MSLA printers, having the vat constantly just sitting there motionless, these pigments can settle in at the bottom of the vat. So after a couple of hours, you'd need to pause the print, stir the resin inside, make sure that the pigments are mixed again, and continue the print. Now with the tilting mechanism of the SL1S, the resin is constantly being stirred upon every layer completion. Now the SL1S also has an upgraded screen over the SL1. Aside from it being monochrome, which makes the print times faster and gives it a much more, well, a much longer lifespan, it also has better resolution. Now, I've also done some test prints of minis and modules to see what I did notice though, and this comes in handy for someone like me who paints detailed models, is the recesses in the minis seem to be slightly deeper, which helps with showing details of prints through paint. One thing I do also have to mention is that the SL1S comes with a protective tray. Basically, the, the tray goes onto the, well, the platform of the SL1 uh, once the print is finished and you want to take off the build plate. The tray will pretty much catch any drips that might otherwise fall on the SL1S or in between the gaps of the screen and the base. And if you think this is not important, well, you'd be wrong. Um, this is my old tray and all of that resin, either through tiny drips or accidental droppage of the build plate due to my butter fingers, well, would have otherwise been a massive headache to clean up, possibly expensive. Then you have the CW1, which has now been released as the CW1S, I believe. Aside from doing the standard washing of parts, it then also dries them with warm air and cures them. Recently, Prusa also updated the firmware of it to allow it to also be able to heat up resin bottles, which is an absolute godsend uh, during the winter months. Personally, to me, the SL1S along with the CW1S and the glue that ties them all together, Prusa Slicer, is pretty much your one-stop shop for what is essentially, in my opinion, one of the best resin experiences you can come across. Now you might have noticed in the time lapses that an error was coming up on the SL1. This was an RPM error I was having with the internal fan. The fan was working just fine. It was just registering as going at a lower RPM than the machine deemed necessary. It didn't affect the print at all. And I knew I was about to do the SL1S upgrade so I ignored it and ordered a new fan, which I then also installed during the live stream. And I also have to mention that uh, the SL1S comes with these QR codes when an error comes up, which you can just scan and it takes you on the page with, uh, you know, diagnosis, possible fixes and comes in extremely handy sometimes. Now I mentioned initially that Prusa have targeted a very specific market with this machine. And I experienced the advantages of the SL1S a few weeks ago. So about a year ago, I posted a photo on my Instagram and Twitter about a part that I designed for a local farmer. The part is a connector for a fertilization machine for crops, which is no longer being produced. I have no idea how it works. And the farmer asked me if I could design one. 
and I did. Uh, I jumped into Fusion 360, designed one, I had printed it on the original SL1 and he was happy with it. A few weeks ago, the same guy called me in panic at around 8.30 p.m. as the part had broken at the worst possible time for him after a year of constant use and asked me if I had <laughs> printed a spare one somewhere. I told him no, uh, but if you come over, anyway, I'll uh, have one ready for you by the time you get here. It took the SL1S exactly one hour and seven minutes to print four of them. Add another maybe five minutes of washing and curing and by the time the farmer got here uh, the parts were ready with a few minutes to spare. Um, now I could have had access to 20 cheaper MSLA printers. I still wouldn't have been able to pull it off within the time frame I did. And this is where my analogy comes in. Let's say you're starting a business. Let's say you're starting a chauffeur business for example which is a business that is very common, like printing on demand has become nowadays, so it will be harder to succeed due to so much competition. So you need to offer something different, something that sets you apart. So you invest in a very fancy car with innovative features, maybe add some champagne in the back seats uh, for the guests, uh, Wi-Fi and tablets for the kids, you know, so they're quiet during the journey. While chances are your prices will be in line with the competition, what you want to do is offer a better experience overall. And that's what makes it worth it. And that is exactly what sets the SL1S apart from other machines. It just offers a better experience. It offers a better experience for the customer and it offers a better experience for the business itself. You are offering a faster turnaround on custom products without losing quality and you're doing so on a machine that is reliable, consistent, built by a reputable company, which has 24 seven support, making your life as a business owner that much easier. Now I'm not gonna pretend that 2000 euros is chump change. It's definitely not. It's a big investment for anyone but it's the kind of investment you will get your returns on much quicker because you are producing more in less time and therefore have more time to work on other projects. Now, I guess you wanna hear what I don't like about the machine. Of course you do. It, it's not perfect. By no means, no machine is. And while the SL1S has pretty much become my go-to resin printer recently, it has a few quirks which I would gladly do without and maybe some features I wish it did have. The first thing I want to mention, and this is not really a fault, but it's worth noting for transparency. Every model I printed with the original SL1 for comparison was exported as an SDL with supports. That way I can have a proper one-to-one -one comparison. Obviously it needed to be resliced for the SL1S. However, I was having issues with a particular file which is, uh, which is the Yuria model by Fotis Mint over here. It printed perfectly on the SL1, but that same file with the same resin was producing errands, mainly in the same exact spot. It almost looks like the area around the hand where the handle of the sword is, was just missing from the file. So I just got the original model, reorientated it again, added new supports, this time it printed perfectly. Now there could have been many reasons for this failure and it didn't even occur to me at the time to just re-slice the file and resend it as it could have been corrupt as I had sent it over Wi-Fi. I don't know. Aside from that, I never had any other issues whatsoever with prints, everything printed on the first try. The resin sensor on the SL1 and SL1S is also an awesome feature to have. However, while it works, it's not always perfectly accurate. Sometimes you fill the vat up to 100% and it shows that it's overfilled and the SL1S will ask you to remove some resin from the vat. This can be a pain sometimes and I truly believe that it can be a quick firmware fix. So in the meantime, I tend to switch my resin sensor off. Prusa Slicer gives you a pretty decent calculation of how much resin um, will, you will use. So I always make sure just to keep that in mind when I'm printing something that might need a refill mid print. Another thing is the Wi-Fi. Now, while the machine has Wi-Fi, which is absolutely great, uh, I would also appreciate if it could accept 5G frequency, um, as some files tend to be quite large and take forever to transfer over my Wi-Fi, unless you are connected via ethernet, of course, then it's just instant. Another interesting quirk that I came across is that if you have to print something that is full build volume, like these lattices here, um, 
getting it out of the machine is going to be an adventure uh, in itself. The build plate sits right at the top, so it can't move any further. And the VAT uh, is in the way, therefore you can't really take the printout without having to unscrew the VAT and then do a coordinated dance between sliding both the VAT and the build plate together to avoid drips. That was a weird one. And finally, and this is just my personal thing here, I have, uh, and it's not just the SL1S, but most resin printers, it's the cover. I, I try to maximize all my space here. I have little of it in here, so I try to use every inch of it uh, as efficiently as possible. The SL1S is 42 centimeters tall, but it requires a shelf of about 80 centimeters because the upward opening cover, that is a lot of wasted space. Stuff like this is why I had to make custom bench with pull-out shelves purely so I can open machines without wasting space. Whether it's upward tilting covers or upward pullout covers, same thing. Any business will tell you space is money. So either having a cover open, I don't know, sideways or downwards or any other way truly that wouldn't require double the height of the machine in empty space uh, would have done for me. Uh, but this once again is just my thing, of course. Now, if you do already own an SL1, doing the upgrade should be an absolutely no-brainer. At 400 euro, it's simply going to completely transform your machine and radically change your experience when it comes to resin printing. So that is it for me. Um, those are my thoughts. They're, they're late. They, they've come quite late, um, but I want to take my time. I want to do a lot of prints. I uh, want to make sure that I don't miss out on anything. Um, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more information or you want to get yourself one of the machine, I'm going to leave an affiliate link in the video description. I want to thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, I do appreciate a, a subscription um, because I, I really want to get to 100,000 subscribers. I want to thank my patrons for constantly supporting me in what I do and they have an enormous amount of patience and I'm forever grateful. Thank you once again and as always, happy making guys.